So we start by talking about galvanometer. A galvanometer is used for detecting current in a circuit and it has very small resistance. So basically it just tells us whether there is current in the circuit or not. So we use galvanometer in a Wheatstone bridge and the symbol for galvanometer is like this. Now we talk about the Wheatstone bridge. So Wheatstone bridge looks like the figure we have in front of us. So you have four resistances. So let us name these resistance. We have say P1 here, P2 here, Q1 here and Q2 here. So this is a Wheatstone bridge. So a particular condition of the Wheatstone bridge is the balanced bridge condition. So the balanced bridge condition simply says that the current through the galvanometer is zero. So the current through the galvanometer is zero. So say this is the current. The balanced bridge condition says that this current is zero. So we want to find out what is this balanced bridge condition in terms of the resistance. So let us see this. So first we label our diagram. We have junction A, junction B, junction C and junction D. So we first focus on the loop A, B, D, A. So the loop A, B, D, A goes like this A, B, D, A. So let us now see the currents going in. So say the bat current from the battery is say I. It splits into two parts I1 and I2. Then at junction B, in the balance bridge, I of G is zero. So all the current goes towards the junction C. So you have I of two here. Similarly at junction D, I of G coming in is zero. So all the current goes towards C. So all the current here is I of two. Now coming back to our loop, A, B, D, A. So first we see that I1 is in the same direction as the loop. So this is how the loop is going. I1 is in the same direction as the loop. So you have a negative sign in front of it. So you get minus I1 P1. Then our loop it goes like this. That is from B to D. So we went from A to B. Now we are going from B to D. And finally we will go from D to A. So we are going from B to D. Now I of G is in the same direction as our loop. So you get minus I of G times R of G. So this is resistance of the galvanometer R subscript G. So then finally our loop goes like this from D to A. But the current is going from A to D. So it is in the opposite direction of our loop. So you put a plus sign in front of it. So you get plus I2 Q1 and you put it equal to zero. In the balance bridge condition we said I of G is zero. So you put this term as zero. And this is the first equation we get. Now we focus on the second loop B C D B. So we are going like this B C D B. So this is our direction. So first is on the branch B C we are going like this. This is our direction of loop. So current and the loop direction are the same. So you have negative sign minus I1 P2. Then we go to the loop C D. So we are going like this. Now the current is in the opposite direction. So we are we are going from C to D but the current is from D to C. So you have a plus sign in front of I2. The current is I2. So you have plus sign in front of I2 times Q2. Then our loop goes like this from D to B. But the current IG is flowing in the opposite, opposite direction. So you have a plus sign in front of it. So plus IG times R subscript G. This is the resistance of the galvanometer. Now this is zero under the balance bridge condition. So you get equation two. So now you divide the two, take one divided by two. We get P1 by P2 is equal to Q1 by Q2. Sometimes you could also write this as P1 by Q1 is equal to P2 by Q2. Now we talk about potentiometer. A potentiometer is used to measure potential difference across two points. So sometimes these two points might be the two ends of a battery. And this is what we will do in our example. So it consists of a long wire which has a uniform cross section. Basically uniform cross section means that it has constant resistance per unit length. 
so the uniform wire here is AB so AB is our long wire and we have two batteries here you have a battery E this battery E is known to you this current is known to you we want to find out this that is potential of a unknown battery E subscript U so this U stands for E unknown so you place this in a loop and you slide this point so this is the slider this is a sliding point so we keep sliding this point so this C basically starts from here, here. you keep sliding it sliding it sliding it till the galvanometer shows you zero reading that is till this I of G is equal to zero so when it becomes zero you stop and then we can compute the potential so it happens say at point C so we focus on this loop uh, this loop A C E U A so this is our loop we are focusing on so first we are going in this direction so I of G there is no resistance here doesn't matter so this direction here so we are going in now this direction so you have E of U that's fine then minus I plus I of G RAC so I of G is the current coming from the unknown battery it adds to the current from the given battery so you get I plus IG in the line AB and this is in the same direction as our chosen loop so you have a negative sign here then we reach point C at point C you now have I of G going in this direction so this is again the same as the direction of the loop and finally you reach the battery it is again the same direction as the direction of the loop so in front of I of G you also have a minus sign so you get a minus sign here now this is our second Kirchhoff law or loop rule now we said that we have slid the wire to the point where I of G is 0 so you take I of G and make it 0 so you get E of U is equal to R A C now this length this A C you can measure and this lambda is given to you so this R A C is nothing but lambda times the length AC so you plug this in so this becomes I times lambda times AC so all three of them are known to you and therefore you can calculate the potential of the unknown battery